I'm going to talk to us a little different from what we did last week. Now, I need you all to hear me. One thing that you must understand to everyone at the sound of my voice is that life is never smooth. The journey of life is not always easy. I'm talking to you as a father, as a pastor, as a friend, as a brother. Life is a fight. Life demands that you fight. It requires tenacity. It requires focus. Every one of us is destined to be great. Everyone in this room is designed to impact the world. No one in this room, at the sound of my voice, if you're watching on live streaming, no one was born a mistake and no one was born without a purpose. There is a reason God made you who you are, created you the way you are. Your place of birth is never a mistake. The color of your skin is never a mistake. Your height is never a mistake. You are in God's design for something great. The day you accept this and accept God's plan for your life, you will live a purposeful life. Many people are living in this day trying to become what they were not created to become. Many people are looking to be who God did not design them to be. It is a reason our world is in this mess. Everybody is leaving their God-designed plans and they are fighting for somebody else's. Until we come to that realization, we will not live to fulfill what he has for us. Can I talk to us? Please hear me. I said in the morning, I'm picking some things that will be all over the place. It's different from what I said in the morning. Life as you have it is not a soft life. There is nothing like soft life. There is nothing like easy life. Listen, no place, no church, no community, no country, no system, no governance, no parent, no pastor, no prophet, no bishop, no archbishop owes you an easy life. It's not cheap. That's why champions don't look for an easy way out. Champions fight to win. And God will have me to tell you that you are a champion. And I want to inf inject, I, I, I don't know, but I, I, I feel, I, I wish I can literally take something and inject this into you right now. <laughs> if, if there was anything like, you know, you can vaccinate people with, with the word. I'll line all of you up like COVID-19 vaccination and, and in, inject it into your bone because you must accept this, that there is greatness in me. 
you must accept this that I am not a mistake. That my problems and my challenges are part of God's design. He's only helping me to mature. I'm talking to, after this prayer, I don't know, I said our mommy, he said brokenness, he's healing brokenness. And some of you are broken because you are looking at the wrong person in the mirror. You are broken because what the mirror is telling you, what you are seeing, you are looking at the wrong mirror. You are looking for the wrong answer. We, we went through a series of things and we, in this series of barrier breaking and bre breaking the anointing to break barriers, we said that in life there will be physical barriers. There will be spiritual barriers. Listen, whether you accept it or not, you are going to fight. There are spirits, there are agents, there are, the, the demonic world is real. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 3. There are things that contend with you. This is good. Let's look at it in a, maybe a message Bible or passion translation. Message Bible. I want to talk to you because you need to break out. You've lived in this deception for too long. You can no longer come to church, smile, dance, shout, break and everything and go back and live in misery. It is an error. We become pretenders for too long in church. Church is a company of hypocrites who shout praise the Lord, but we go out there and curse, we curse the God in our heads. We cannot say it in our mouth because the things we are dealing with do not match what we pray for. The world is unprincipled, says the word. It is dog, each dog out there. The world doesn't fight fair. Now, you don't need to be 50 years to know that the world doesn't fight fair. You don't need to, it is, it is, it is what it is. The world doesn't fight fair. The devil doesn't fight fair. Never have and never will. That is why the Bible says, Holy Spirit, you, have, you, you need to help me, please. The Bible says, since the time of John the Baptist, keep the scriptures there, the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. In other words, the kingdom of God have had people whose head have been be, be taken off. People who believed, who trusted, who stood in the gospel. People who called or God called apostles but their lives were taken out for the sake of the gospels. Violence. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink and sleep. The kingdom of God requires a fight. How long are you going to live your life complaining for what is not in your hand when he has put it in you? The tools of our trade, the tools, the weapons of our warfare, they are not marketing or manipulation. But they are for demolishing that entire massively corrupt culture. That is what you carry inside of you. That is what the anointing of God is. That is what the power of God is in your life. It is a weapon. The Bible that you preach and you read is a weapon. It's a double-edged sword. The blood of Jesus in which you stand and declare is a weapon. Your worship, your praise is a weapon. It is not carnal. 
We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies. And indeed, we live in a culture with warped philosophies. Some of which we, we have believed even in church. There are people who serve God, but they believe in that warped philosophy and what the world thinks life should be. And so you've lived your life defined by what the world is saying and not by what God is saying. No wonder Paul in another place said that don't be conformed to this norm, to this practice, to what is in our world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I came to talk to you. So renew your mind. What you see on screen is not real. It is acting. People script lies and portray it on screen and you believe it. When the Bible, the word breathed by God is given to you as a manuscript for life, you rather choose the screen over the manuscript. Anybody can write a book based on how they feel. Based on their experiences, that does not make it your guiding principle. It is what the Bible has given you. And so, I came to inject something into you to fight. Paul said to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. Listen, if Christianity was easy, we would not be here. If this Christianity was easy, he wouldn't have hanged, been hanged on a cross, a wooden cross. Real nails were running through his hands. He carried a cross. If this was easy, his side would not have been pierced with sword. His flesh removed. If this was easy, he was God. But yet, he endured it. It hasn't been handed down to us with ease. And so we cannot walk in it with ease. We have to fight. This good fight of faith. I'm talking to a young life here. Stop living your life with that entitlement mentality. That whatever I want must come to me now. That is not in your Bible. Paul said in that scripture, please keep my scripture on for me. I'll be out of your way very soon. But I want to talk to you. When you feel bored, stand on your feet and listen. Because you cannot get bored in what I'm telling you. Then, something, then the demons in your house are strong. <laughs> Especially if you see yourself sleeping. Then this one, there's something behind it. You cannot listen to this and sleep. On this last Sunday of the month of March, you will forever remember what I'm telling you. Him to build something inside of you. you. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies, tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God. The barriers that have been lifted, you know them. You know what they call them. You know the names that they've given to them in this system, in this our culture that we live in, in this world that we live in. But he has given us powerful tools fitting every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Loose thoughts. So I thank God for, for your, what you shared. Thank God for Amir. Thank you. Loose thoughts. Because the thoughts will be there. But it is what you control. It's how you direct it. That's how you direct it. I came to help you. The life in Christ is a good life. 
Can you tell somebody, whisper it, the life in Christ is a good life. He said, don't believe in the lie. This is the truth. In Christ, we have good life. That's what he said. The thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he said, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. Have it abundantly. The life in Christ is an abundant life. The, the life in Christ is not half good, half bad. No, it is a total, full package. The devil has nothing good to offer. He has no good to offer. And by the way, the devil doesn't give anything for free. No. He will give you a shortcut. He will give you palm reading. He will give you witchcraft. He will give you babies from the sea, under the water. He will give you money, fast money. He will let those things happen, but it is not for free. You pay for it. Because he needs an exchange for your soul. He will give you weed. He will give you drugs. He will give you alcohol. He will give you sex. He will give you all of that. And tell you this is it. But you will pay for it. And it's a painful one. He came to help you. Say that we pull down strongholds. We pull down barriers. Today, I pray that the things that have become barriers... To your breakthrough be broken down in the name of Jesus. Those things that have become strongholds. Stronghold. Stronghold. It's a stronghold. You know when you have a stronghold. Strongholds don't just happen. Before anyone can gain a stronghold. They first have to have a footstool. It takes a foot. Stepping into it. And step by step, foot by foot, they gain control and call it our territory. That is what the devil has done to many lives. He's lied to you step by step. Your beauty is in this person. It's only this person who can help you. You need their money to live. It is only when you exchange it for this that you do well. It is only when you sacrifice your body. It is only, this and it's a lie. He's looking for a footstool to gain a stronghold and become a barrier. He said, just a little puff here. Just a little glass of alcohol won't do anything to you. Just that little sex will not kill you. That is how I know that you love me. If only you can give me a little of your body. Only if you can exchange it and he is putting a step into your mind and into your life until he gains a stronghold. But thanks be to God who has given us the weapons that are powerful to bring down every stronghold. Stronghold. Your thoughts. Your mindset. Today, may every evil mindset be broken. Whew. Mental illness be broken. That is not of God. He has not given us the spirit of fear. He has not given us the spirit that put us down, but he has given us sound mind. My God, he's giving you sound mind, not a confused mind. Not knowing what to do, to, to do today and confused about what to do tomorrow. No, that is not what God has given you. He's giving you sound mind. Somebody declare, I have sound mind. Can you put your hand on your head and declare, my mind, I have sound mind. By the power of the Holy Spirit. 
break it down. You know, Lord, help me. I, I, I struggled with someone for today. Anytime I struggle like that, Clifford Dems were asking me, where, what are the points for the script? I said, I don't know. Even though I knew what I had prepared. First service was there, but somehow he was pushing me into different directions on this one. And I wasn't sure. So I prepared two sermons for this morning. And I sat down and he said, I'm healing brokenness. And some of you, this is your deliverance. Yeah. You see, the, oh Lord, help me. The reason why you have been jumping to the old over and over and over again is because of all the things that you have allowed the enemy to implant over your head. You know, your biggest barrier is what lies behind, in between your two ears. That is your mind. And this morning, the Lord is healing you. Don't be conformed, but be renewed. Somebody say, I'm renewed. I'm renewed. Hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me. I say it and I'm a believer of it. I don't say it to excite you because I'm living it. There is nothing impossible with God. The fact that you haven't seen it happen doesn't mean that God is wicked and God can't do it. He's doing it in another form. You may not even see it now, but God will always honor his word. Live for him. You know, no matter what you do, there will be disappointments in life. But we established last week that disappointments are only temporary. People will disappoint you. I will disappoint you. Oh, shoot, I will. Because I'm human. Human beings disappoint. If I haven't disappointed you already, please, maybe along the way. I might tell you that I'll give you a call tomorrow and not call you and forget. <laughs> I might promise you some money and never give it to you. That's human. It happens. But no disappointment is permanent. Because within every disappointment is an appointment. And that appointment is greater than the this that came before the appointment. And so please hear me. Stop modeling, molding, molding your life, shaping your life by the voices of the masses. Stop living by what is popular. Are you hearing me? Oh, I like the sound of it. What did I just say? Stop living by popular opinions. Stop living your life, shaping your life by what is popular. Especially in this social media age. Where you see the Photoshop pictures. Today people can put anything on social media and you are sitting at home and you are, you are depressed. Don't, be, don't believe everything you see on social media, though. It's a powerful, listen, social media is a powerful tool. There's a reason God gave us Facebook, Instagram, all of that in this age. It is a tool for greatness. It's not a weapon to use against people. So, People's opinion will always be people's opinion. Am I, am I helping us? Am I, am I, I told you today I came to talk to us. Because the Lord is healing brokenness. After the prayer we prayed, there is no way you must leave this church and walk again with your head bowed down. Your head is lifted up. You go to those places again 
where you went with shattered clothes, this time you're going to dress up. You're going to go with the makeup. You're going to look for that same old dress, but this time you have dry cleaned it. You are going to just stand in the mirror and shine your face. Do first layer, second layer. <laughs> do the extension. Put that same, it was $5 earrings. But you know what? You wear it again and he adds newness to it. You have brushed that hair. You get that high heel, that six... Uh, uh, um, You stand on it and you walk to that same party they said you could not, you're not invited and just come in there and just say hello and walk away. They ask you, what are you doing here? I just came to say hello. Show up, let them know that you are still here. That the person they gave up on, God had a bigger plan and God picked him up into something new. Listen, when men write you off, you better accept and applaud and say that our rider lies God's right up than man's right off. Because when God writes you up, the ink is his blood. My God, I feel something happening in this room already. I see some lives being changed in this room. Please stop believing in the opinions of people. My, my spiritual father says it in a very beautiful way that uh, opinions are like armpits. Everybody has two of them. People will always have their opinions about you. Listen, even when you're doing good, some people will have their opinions. Whatever you do, some unhappy somebody will have an opinion about you. Oh, I hope I'm helping somebody. You must refuse to be held captive by people's fickle opinions. Whose report will you believe? Whose report are you walking in? In the volume of the book is written of me. He has written my life in this manual of life. In this Bible, he, has, he said that I am above and not beneath. He said I am beautifully and fearfully made. He has, you see, the combination, wonderful and fearful. You know how you look at some things and you're like, wow. And then you look at it again, you're like, ooh. This looks fearful. God has taken his time. God, I don't know who I came to lift up this morning. No matter the anger they look at you, all they will see is the handwriting of God. That is why they cannot define you. That is why you don't listen. You are not on trial. So stop trying to explain yourself to people who are trying to figure you out. Because if they can figure you out, then it is a work of your hand. But if they can figure you out, then it means Yahweh, the God of heaven, is at work in your life. Can I get some hundred people in this? room lift a shout to God in this house stop letting people define you by how they see you that is why you don't dress for somebody to tell you you look good you dress in your mirror you look at yourself and you tell oh Joseph boy baby today you look sharp you look good in that shirt you look good in those shoes work them out guys work them out baby you walk out in confidence not waiting for anybody to tell you how good you look Some of you get depressed because you posted a picture and nobody said anything. You woke up in the morning checking how many likes. <laughs> so, 12 a.m. Bring. Wrong like. 12 15. Fast asleep. Bring, bring. What? Only two likes? And then you are depressed waiting for people's approval 
it is God, if, when God approves you, listen, Jesus didn't need anybody. When he came out from the water, the Bible says before he performed a miracle, the heavens opened and God said unto him and to everybody, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. It was not in his works. God did not wait for Jesus to raise a dead person up before he could say that you are my beloved. He didn't wait for him to heal the sick. He was still Jesus. The word did not know him, but God knew who he was. Listen to me. The Father in heaven knows who you are. He knows you are his. That is why it does not take work, but grace. We are testimony, we are product of grace. I'm sorry. I, 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 I didn't mean to go that route. Oh, you all are too much. Come on, Janex. 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 Don't, don't settle. Listen, do you remember? One day, Jesus was walking and he was coming through town and women and men and everybody came out with handkerchiefs and with hemp aprons and all of that. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. The angels are singing. Hosanna in the highest. Let the king be lifted up. They were laying it on the ground and Jesus was walking. He was coming on their, on, on their clothes, lay down. These people were praising him but not too many days after. They turned to him and said, crucify him. Say, crucify him. Say, wait a minute. Huh? Did they just crucify him? Did they just say that? Weren't they singing my praise last Sunday? Weren't they saying, oh, he's the greatest? Uh, 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 um, what, what do you do? Uh, that thing you do, what is it called? Spoken word. Spoken word. Oh, yeah, Joe. Oh, man, Joe. As for Joe, when he does the spoken word, oh, my God, you are anointed. The next Sunday. Uh, who? Joe who? William who? Who is that? Crucify him. Live your life by his approval. Only his approval. And today, I pray that you develop this tough skin. Tough mind. You, you, you saw that when, 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 when and Craig sent me that, that text that I read, the testimony. I said, wow. I said, pastor, in the past I would have been depressed because they fired me. But I said, no way. I can't be depressed in this. His plans are better for me. You know what? The fact that you lost the job doesn't make you terrible and bad and not good enough and not, No! Sometimes, you know, the biggest slap you can give to the devil is when you ignore him. That is why pra praise and worship is so beautiful. Because he expected you to come in. <laughs> but he showed up at church and saw your hands lifted up. And you were praising God. He messed you up in the week. But you are still praising God. Because no, it's not in what I have lost. But it is in who I have gained. It is in the one who rules supreme over my life. If only God would be lifted up. He would draw all men to him. So let my king be glorified. really want to finish. <sighs> Hear me. Next week, Palm Sunday, we are still in the Lent season. And we'll be heading towards the cross. What he already did for us. We don't celebrate Easter as if we are now going to overcome. We don't celebrate the cross because we think that, oh, it is on that Easter Sunday or Good Friday that we are going to be victorious. We celebrate it because of the victory he has already won for us. And that is why 
I told you the other time that the battle is already rigged. The victory is rigged. The favor is rigged. It's in your favor. What you see now is not a real thing. On the cross, when he hanged on the cross and said, it is finished. He said, it is finished. And so the battles and the warfare and the unseen things that you face are not real. He said that you, before you call it a problem, I've already overcome. And so this is the victory that overcomes even our faith. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And that's why you must stand up and say this, that no accusation against me will stand because he was accused for my sake. And you overcame. You must rise over it. And fight through it. What people say about you is not as important as what God says about you. Uh, there's a scripture. Give me Mark chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. I, I want to be rounding up. Mommy, am I doing okay? Am I on, on point? Somebody is being literally like, you know how vaccinated we got? Some of you took vaccine almost every week. <laughs> Just so that you can overcome the COVID thing. Booster. Booster 1, booster 2, booster 3. This one is Holy Ghost booster. He's injecting you with grace. He's putting it in your system. You are going to face tomorrow. You are going to walk into your Monday with confidence. You're going to walk to that classroom. That same lecturer who has been harassing you. You are going to sit in the class and look at his face with a smile. And you're going to be taking the exam and you're coming out victorious and he'll be asking you, but I tried everything to fail you. And you're going to say, victory is already mine. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. And what, does, what is it that you must And then he said to them, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to you who hear more, more will be given to you. In other words, Jesus was saying this. Whatever you give your ears to, Will have control over you. Whoever informs you forms you. So, in conclusion, let me say this don't be afraid of the challenges of today. Don't be afraid because of the trials of the now. You will face challenges. You will face opposition in life. It is a fact. But please remember, and please write this somewhere in your mind, in your heart, that every miracle started with a problem. You're too quiet on the side. Remember this. Every miracle started with a problem. Before Lazarus was raised, he was bound, wrapped, death, given up on. They said that he is dead. Four days he is smelling. It is bad. Jesus said he's only asleep. How can you look at somebody who has been buried for four days and say that he's dead? And the Bible says that he gave, he said that, that these people may know that you are God, that the glory belongs to you. So when he walked to Lazarus, uh, two men cried, Lazarus, come forth. Jesus knew that he was already alive. But the people needed to see the problem before they could encounter the miracle. Blind Bartimaeus. Why is he blind? That the glory of God will be revealed. That the glory will be seen. Why am I like this? So that the name of the Lord be glorified in your life. If I am really called of God, why am I facing these challenges? So that the glory of God will be seen. You will not know my glory until you encounter challenges. 
Until you face opposition, until you face trials, young one, please hear me. The fact that you are facing an obstacle doesn't mean that the course is ended. Sometimes you may fall off the obstacle course and fall into the water, but you get up and go back into it. Do you realize that in life, nobody bothers a loser? No, you don't understand. The devil will not bother a loser. He only comes for those who are champions. So whatever you are facing, it's because there is a champion in him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you did not hear me. Non, non-achievers don't intimidate anybody. People that are going nowhere, I feel like jumping. I feel like something is in my blood right now. I feel, I, I feel like somebody needs to hear this. The reason you are facing all these problems is because there is a winner in you. There is success in you. There is greatness in you. There is power in you. Your future is great. Your future is bright. There is power. Think about it. Think about it. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Mommy, let me give you an I feel some energy has come over me this morning or this afternoon. Jesus, the promise of the Father. God is bringing himself down. Then he puts himself in a 13-year-old girl who has never known a man and says you are going to be pregnant. From, I mean, think about what, what, what? The confusion, the chaos. Why would God create chaos for his Messiah? I mean, I feel bad for Joseph. <laughs> Joseph, Joseph. Joseph never tried anything. He never enjoyed anything. <laughs> Poor Joseph. And, and then you must claim that he's your child. Hey. Why is God creating chaos when he's a Messiah? Drop him from the skies. Let some pomp and some pageantry, some, something happen about him. But the Bible says that he was born and not just even his birth. Apart from the confusion that happened. You know, I, I can, the gossip that was in t- Oh, social media was busy. Yeah. Instagram was busy. Pictures. They'll see Mary and then you know how people act like they are talking on their phone and they are recording you? Mary stories were trending on social media. It was trending in millions. God, have you seen a 13 year old pregnant and says that, you know, she, she's, I mean, Holy Spirit, can you imagine? Bloggers were really on top of the game. It was in the chaos that she, was, she, was, she conceived. And gave birth. And you know, Jesus is being born and in a manger. In a poor place. Where is God in this? But the Bible says that after he had endured, God has highly exalted him. Giving him the name that is above every name. At the mention of the name Jesus, every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus is Lord. But it was not seen. In how she, he was conceived. Could it be that the chaos in your life <laughs> is God's platform for something great to come? Could it be that why God will allow your mother to die at the prime of your life to see you married? Why can't my mother live to see me walk the aisle? Could it be that it was God's agenda for something great? I'm sorry, Joe. I looked at you and I had to say that. How do you explain it? Because as high as the heavens are from the earth, so are his ways. Maybe you wouldn't have become the man that you are now. Maybe you still have been wandering around thinking about, oh, am I going to be able to marry? 
The Bible says that until Uzziah died, Isaiah was a prophet. He had written chapters. He had seen more. But the Bible says that Isaiah says that until King Uzziah died, it was that time that God opened my eyes to see. Sometimes, some things will leave your life in order for God to open the new life to you. Somebody lift your hand and say, I'm a hero in the making. I'm a, hero in the making. I'm a, barrier, breaker. I'm a barrier breaker. I am a line crosser. Line crosser. Say, challenges don't, me. challenges don't stop me. They only motivate me. They only propel me onto greatness. What God has spoken about me will come to pass in the name of Jesus. So, in doing that, please watch those who you surround yourself with. Silence the voice of negative people. Who see negative? You see, life would always, there are four people that you surround yourself with. People who add, people who subtract, people who multiply, or people who subtract. Uh, um, that, uh, or what? Divide. Divide, right? Add. Subtract, multiply, and divide. Which of these people are you entertaining in your company? <clears throat> May the Lord help us. What is your friend doing to you? What is your friend saying to you about the God you serve? What is your friend whispering to you about your situation? What are they telling you? Some of you listen to them more than you listen to God. So I'll conclude with this. Stop looking for the approval of friends and look for the approval of God. I'm done.